Well, it does make a lot of sense. Important to remember the FPX are coming off a loss at the start of the day. While the early game did look a little bit back and forth, it was a rough, rough game for Nogarit. So many deaths across the top side of the map. Forced into that AP Gragas. Not the premier AP top lane option, but one that they had to pick because things like the Kennen and the Gwen were banned away. You can see the C9 already banning away the Kennen. Have to see what he ends up on this time because while FPX you'd expect to still be the favorites in this matchup, have to hope that they've shaken off that earlier loss. Yeah, a lot of interesting things happening in this draft, right? C9 taking Yumi away from FPX. Damwon banned it away from them in the first game of the day as well. Irelia banned from FPX against Perks, which we just saw last game. Don't we obviously played it as well. Lee Sin ban coming in. And the cannon ban from C9 spells that they want to put something, uh, not on something that they can actually target and maybe counter. Yeah, I mean, this, the bans here from Red Side just seem very obvious so far. I feel like Red Side now has the duty of banning, banning Yudi, you and me, for the rest of the tournament. And then Nuggery was literally the reason FPX beat Cloud9 last time. That, that, that was such a Cloud9 favorite game, and he absolutely destroyed them with the full damage cannon build. Yeah, I wonder if they're gonna go some kind of first pick Jace here. Lucian, banned away, takes away Lucian Nami. MF banned away, uh, Yumi banned away, takes away the, the MF Yumi. You've got things like Graves top, Jace, MF available, Aphelios is up with Thresh, so there's a lot of OPs, I think, for both these teams. LeBlanc as well, notably. Graves, I think, just looking so oppressive and so just generally strong in the meta right now with, uh, you know, so many AD options, AD assassins, AD junglers, a lot of, you know, the hyperscaling AD carries as well. We'll see what how Cloud9 want to build their composition to potentially mitigate the value you get from the true grip from this top lane pick and what, what Fudge wants to take into it. What is the option going to be? Again, we had a Malphite hover last game. I'm just saying maybe it's time for the Malphite, but the Twisted Fate, certainly a strong that, start. That makes me think it's not going to be a Malphite. That makes me think carry, because when you have Twisted yep. Fate, you can affect both sides. So Jace, to me, is one where you can play it for play the lane for early push versus the Graves uh, and, and try and push that way and then use Twisted Fate pressure mid. Ooh, I think C9 took a page out of Damwon's homework there. First rotating TF MF. That's exactly what Dam One Gaming did, and I mean, if you want to copy somebody's homework, <laughs> yeah, that's not a, bad. They're, that's a good oh, well, kid they in the class. Jace. They swapped to Jace, so they are going to yes, still like... same kind of thing, right? They're playing TF Jace. That's exactly what we saw Dam One doing. Will they go into the kind of similar full composition? But TF Jace is probably the strongest top side you can get. The only problem is blinding TF when things like Rise and Silas up could be a bit dangerous. And it's very critical for how you play the early lane, lane phase versus the Graves, because you can play it to to get the early shove, and you can play it aggressively, but you have to support it with every resource. Twisted Fate does not start with the ability to get. A to the top side. Uh -huh. So jungle pathing uh, is going to be incredibly important in who controls. We're going to get the Jarvan coming out here. Now, Tian, the last time he was picking Jarvan, it was on red side 1-2 against all these dashes. We talked about it. But this time around, not much mobility for C9, right? TF's going to get locked up. Jace's only way out is queuing a minion uh, in hammer form. And so they're going to go for Rise Jarvan. You'd expect Silas Jarvan, this kind of combo. Uh, the only AP damage will be in the mid lane, this double AD top side. Now the question will be, if they do go for mid lane here, are Cloud9 going to match the first three with picking jungle on their own side, or will they opt to go for one of the premier AD carry options left up and available? But instead, oh. don't want to put too much AD there. You might get the a rumble. Garvin rumble. Classic combination. Yeah. The uh, hot pot here, Jarvan Cataclysm, <laughs> the hot and pot. Rumble Ultimate over the top. Yeah, I was thinking Ryze will do well kind of individually against TF, right? The 1v1's yeah. great, but Jarvan Galio could be good against this comp. Jarvan Rumble, the hot pot is coming in. How does C9 respond? This is full AOE Wombo. So this already, Cloud9 know the direction they have to go. They're not going to want to fight into these big AOE combinations, split the map, play for uh, split pushing here. Blabber on early aggressive jungler. Uh, Zen definitely capable of setting them up for strong lanes. Now, interestingly, AD carry support not picked from either side. This is full top side from both teams. We saw Lyric talking about it, where they early rotate, you know, solo laners and things like this. We see it all from the top side now. So MF, Aphelios, we're going to see things like Kai'Sa, Ezreal, and Jin come out. Banning a lot. I mean, we have to see exactly what they want to ban. You can ban away the Premier Sword options, taking away Thresh, obviously, sometimes makes that pick like Aphelios feel a little bit weaker. I like the Ziggs respect ban coming out. Do not want to put C9 in a position where Vulcan is completely free to roam or even set them up for one of the Ziggs kill lanes that we've seen so much of. Amumu, all but invisible since the play is now also getting banned away. But this is the luxury you have when both sides have matched first round picks heading into second round bans. They can target so many of these niche picks. Are they gonna, you know, target Ezreal or target Aphelios as far as continuing on with the bottom side focus here? Because I think the Ziggs is really intelligent. They know Cloud9 are gonna want to have roaming plays early on to, to really set up solo push and, and split push. So they're trying to pin him in lane. I think Jin would be a big pick here for FPX, but it looks like C9 is gonna go for the Rakan. Looking for some kind of Ezreal or Rakan lane you'd expect with a double dash to play kind of weak side. Uh, very, very safe, of course. You can play towards the top side. Now, FPX have full choice. You know, we have got things like the Aphelios without Thresh, though. Kai'Sa could be a good pick, but then is it something you want to opt into? Because, I mean, if you do blind pick Ezreal, C9 can go Kai'Sa. I think Jin is just one of the strongest champs here. 
definitely agree, high priority there because it, it further enables that pick possibility if you're trying to, to spread things out. Rakan, I also just love as a pairing with Zin. Uh, because if you're facing into Jarvan Rumble combinations there, Rakan is so good versus Jarvan. You cannot lock him down. Sets up a lot of uh, yep. you know river fights and vision skirmishes cool. in your favor. Kaiser Rel. I mean, it's a lot of engagement. Wombo, baby. So the yeah. Wombo is there. And I think at this point, I feel like you cannot afford to pick an immobile AD carry like Jin. You are so vulnerable to dives against the J4 uh -huh. Relk. I feel like it just has to be something with a dash. And it's not going to be the Ezreal. Instead, we're going to get the Tristana okay. now coming out. Tristana into Kai'Sa. Okay. I thought they would go for Jin for long range. But like you said, Dragos, FBX going full dive. And this means, hey, we're going to keep you guessing where we're putting our focus. Zin Twisted Fate can go to the Jace lane to support this pushing versus Graves early on. But they can also kill kill lane bottom side with Tristan, a hell of blades, set it up with the Rakan. You can double jump, you can help him get in further. Yeah, and I want to see exactly what C9 were doing last time around, where Blabber, Vulcan, and Perks were just moving up and down the river so beautifully. How do you do that? You establish control on one side first, have top pressure or bot pressure, and then transition that from top to mid to bot. Can they do this again? I expect them to play top side early, of course, with the Jace, path up there to cover him in the early stages so he can get the push, and then see how they dissect the map. I love that focus, because so much for this game does determine for me on the early stages, and can and they set themselves up for the early pushing. The plays between jungle, between support, opening up control around roaming from mid to the sides of the map is gonna be, uh -huh. you know, step one. Do, do they find success there or does it all come crashing down? Absolutely. And for Cloud9 and Cloud9 fans out there, this is the time to take a breath, to reset. This is not the previous game. This is not Wampa stomping. This is not super fed. You are back to zero. You have to work your way up to find this win, a loss means elimination, a win keeps hope alive for the rest of the day. Day two groups is really where the composure of the players on stage is measured and matters the most. These are the ones where you make or break your entire year. You've been playing, working through your region's league the entire year, and it builds up to, at some times, a single game, which means life or death in the tournament. Yeah, it was life or death last game, and it is here again. C9, are they going to go for some level one shenanigans? They weren't the one to pull the trigger. It was Rogue, and they were the ones able to punish it, but you talked about it, Kobe. Some kind of split map topside could be really beneficial for C9 here, because they can play weak side with their current bot lane. Tiana is going to spot up Blabber, and the whole army of C9 moving into the top side. And the best way to do that, to split the map, is for a level one. Uh, one of the best things that, you know, the successful team that this tournament have done thus far, namely Dom Juan and EDG, is rotating the cooldowns on their early trinket wards to track enemy jungles for a large portion of the early stages, removing that surprise factor from Tian. Dom Juan, that's how, how they've dominated him. You know, they, they neutralized the first three gank attempts that he went for when he was on Jarvan last time. So two things I just want to note here. First of all, C9 ran topside and didn't place a ward, so they didn't actually get information as to where Tian is starting. The good thing is Blabber swapped the sweeper, and he can sweep out that bot side ward because he probably wants to path top. But as I say that, a lot is happening here. C9, maybe they were trying to some wards into their bot side jungle. Now they're faking some kind of invade, I wonder. They don't have the sweeper with them. And it's, the only benefit there is that your sweeper is ready at, at an earlier stage if you don't have the swap out. So you have the activation. If you drop the ward and then go back, then you won't be able to sweep before starting your camps. But he doesn't do it again. And the only one they get is up on Raptors. Yeah, a lot of things happening in this early game. The thing is, C9 didn't actually do anything. They didn't get any deep vision apart from that ward on Raptors with FPX Soul. So now they have control of bot Bro, push and they have vision one. on Blabber. After shotgun a proc and they get all five stacks down. Immediate exhaust. They know they have to keep this fight going if they want to come out on top. It's fed. Gets the explosive shot. Well traded back by the side of C9. That could have been disastrous. Yeah, the reason I say they have vision on Blabber is because they have vision on this blue Sven. A lot of fighting here. King. Second trade definitely not going nearly as well. Sven can be forced to use his pot very early. LWX in a similar uh, boat. I wonder if Blabber is going to do red Raptors into Gromp here. I think bot lane is kind of like Armageddon right now. Sven might have to base level one. It's not going to be a cannon wave, so if FPX fast push this, I think Sven has to stay. And this is where we see the ramifications of the level one play, because exactly. Blabber goes over. Oh, the ward just, oh, it just out. This is perfect. <laughs> this is perfect for C9. It took the words right out of my mouth. Let's go. Yeah, but the thing is, Sven, look how much he's losing for not staying. I think Blabber could have covered him. Now he's level one with two CS. LWX can base and maybe pick up a refillable. Come back out on the lane. A lot of experience missed there from C9. Even overlapping here, because he had early push there from Perks, replacing the ward uh, towards Raptors to see if the Jarvan makes the play towards top of this bottom side river, because we turn our eyes towards the Scuttle Crab spawn now, and off of the reset there, should be able to push out and acquire bottom one. Oh, and just honestly, such a difficult level one. Again, 
Sven also into precision instead of uh, inspiration, so he doesn't get he doesn't have cookies, he doesn't have biscuits, he doesn't have anything here. It's so funny how we just talked so much about the early game, but nothing actually happened. <laughs> well, there's so much with the vision play, and again, yep. the, the rotation <laughs> of the cooldowns on your trinket ward is, is actually critical, and it has, has been the difference in these early fights. 3v3 bolt side, he talks about it, Kobe. Sven can start to push the wave, it's bouncing in C9's favor, it's gonna be a 3v3. So much AOE CC potential here, though, with the J4 coming in as well. They're focusing Tian for now, he's not gonna be able to land the hooks. Ooh. Flag and drag not gonna work. He's gonna get the reset. They can go right back over the wall. Sven can things kicked off. That's gonna be first blood for C9. Oh, the target selection from Blabber and Vulcan. I just have to give him credit because it looked like Crisp was walking up there, but they didn't make a decision on who they want to go on to. But Vulcan and Blabber instantly dive onto Tia and Sven right behind them. Has double buff, stacking wave. Are we gonna see some kind of dive here? FPX don't have a heal. Definitely. This this is just so monumental of a victory for Cloud9. Not only do they, they prep for the early skirmish, but winning on the crab, they also are able to secure this bottom crab. So you know that Tien is immediately going to beeline for top side crab. It's very easy to continue tracking him because you know the setup he cleared from blue side down to bottom two. Yeah, look at the, the target selection from Vulcan and Blabber. Crisp walks up and kind of jumps in, but look oh, at Blabber and Vulcan jungler. instantly going for jungle. Crisp is kind of a little bit dizzy there. Tian misses his combo because Blabber flashes Tian's combo. Sven follows first blood and double buffs. And this is why I love the Tristana pick for our bottom side because because you do have the threat, the kill potential here for the all-ins early on. It changes completely the way they want to play these early stages. Now, we're seeing Jarvan as well exit from top side of the map uh, and a re-entry on top side. Immediately, Vulcan now moving with Blabber to try and uh, you know take over this vision control of top side. And one thing I want to highlight is FPX blind picked Kai'Sa. C9 could have gone for Ezreal, but it's a losing lane. They opt into Tristana, exactly. a winning lane, and it has a dash as well to escape this Jarvan rumble combo you just talked about, Akobi. Side. Moving towards the top okay. side, Nogri has flash. Has the dash, has the smoke screen. Has to be patient, but there should be no way out of this one. Immediately, the knockup, they fall through clean kill on the top side when you win bottom side unlock the support for the first roam those extra seconds matter so much yeah we talked about it and we saw it last game we thought c9 would unlock top first to bot okay, but they're unlocking punish. bot to mid to top vulcan might have to dash out okay. here he has the flash then on the way he can take his time on this one has to flash oh, out he's going right back in that's going to be the gold card vulcan getting burned lower and lower they're trying to barbecue him alive he's taken down and he will drop how many kills can right back for now it's a one for one but nuggery on the way in tp coming in too perk's gonna go for the gold card waiting to lock it in now blabber committing fully to the fight zin Zhao absolutely popping up they do it first row. They're, they're gonna, gonna do it again first at PX. Four kill kill for Blabber, baby. Are you kidding me? Kobe was jumping up and down there. That's a huge fight from C9. FPX had the numbers advantage initially, but massive props to Vulcan. Six assists, six kills to C9. 3-0-3 for Blabber. This jungle supporter playing amazingly. That's the Blabber fish right there in the river. Another skirmish. And it's, you called it out perfectly, Dracos. The commitment into the fight. Okay, so Vulcan, he holds everything. So nothing gets interrupted by the rail. Has the double dash to gain some extra range. And that makes Doombee commit his flash to finish off the first kill. Yeah, and as we see in the new Axe Effect replay, Nuggery does TP back, but he's so far away. He TP top, whereas Fudge TP mid. So by the time Nuggery arrives, Fudge does too. C9 come on down. On top three kills to Blabber, C9 are running away with this early game. You guys called it at the beginning of the day. This this is not the week two of old. <laughs> this is the <laughs> new and improved week two. Cloud9 now, they have to refocus. We talked about in Champ Select, first check mark was going to be the mid jungle roams. Can they set themselves up in these lanes for success? Yes. Box is checked right there. So now you have to transition it to Twisted Fate Ultimates here for Perks. He's now level six off of the experience from that early skirmish. If you open up the vision control around mid lane, then you get to hover to either side of the map and it makes both side lanes of FBX have to respect these roams. So you get so much pressure just off of denying vision and threatening even the use of that ult. Clean, controlled snowball, similar to what we saw last game. I think the big difference this time around is FPX have the Rumble, they have the Jarvan, they have some easy ways to set up kills, to set up picks. So Cloud9 have to keep giving respect to FPX as they try to push this lead forward. I think this is where you need to focus because Doonby, the classic for his Rumble, is the Predator Rumble. So he, he likes to uh -huh. roam around. But if you keep him pinned under tower and you have mid-jungle roam again for that vision to support perks, then you get first move. Yes, yeah, C9 own the bot side of the map right now. Vulcan and Gulabra pairing up. Look at that pink they have on the Raptor. So deep in the enemy jungle, they can control bot side as much as they want. So now you have to think, FPX, what do you want to do right now? Well, Tian probably has to play towards top side. He's getting level six, Fudge has no flash. They can use their ultimates to kind of chain CC him down. So Blabber smartly decides, okay, I'll match top side. Perks has ult anyway, so he can come to the play first and he has mid push. So Blabber could catch Nogri off guard here. Oh, and a level five Jarvan is just honestly not that menacing. Blabber moving up, level six, gonna zone Nogri away. He will spot him out, but he's gonna delete the control ward pretty handily. 
Perks has to be careful here. Tiana Doinby, obviously a lot of burst damage as long as the flag and drag connects, but Perks still confident enough nice. to step forward here. So many resources from Cloud9 invested in opening up the vision control through both sides of mid lane through the river. This this sets them up for taking objectives without being contested by the combination that has big wombo combos. You know, they, they don't even get to go into the river because there's that threat of that pick. So C9 will be able to get it without any bloodshed. And let's talk about the, the wombo combo right there, the scaling of it. Jarvan Rumble doesn't scale that great. Three, four items and it starts to fall off. This is a mid game Dragon Herald kind of neutral objective orientated comp to fight around with the amount of AOE you've got. If they're on the back foot up until 25, 30 minutes, their comp slowly starts to lose its pressure. That's why I like that you called out the flash cooldown for Fudge because the top side of the map is where you want to use your combinations on these targets that don't have flashes to get out of it. Um, and Fudge plays the wave accordingly with the support of the, the extra vision through River. They're able to push it out and they don't have to deal with that yeah. opening. C9 have Herald now, so what they're going to do is Blabber is probably going to clear out Krux, base, clear his bot side jungle, Herald bot for Sven, maybe use a TF ult kind of dive and get Drake for themselves. So FPX, the problem is after having lost that early fight on top side, their options have run out. Now they're level six, but C9's flashes are starting to come up. The only thing they can really do now is cross map top. And that's a critical point because if, if they do give up the bottom side, then you're also giving over. Not only should be side lane pressure with all the extra tower damage to, uh, you know, with the Rift Arrow for Cloud9, but if you take away that early dragon, the thing that FPX want to force you to group up on so they can use their wombo combo, the draw just is not there. Absolutely the case. And I think now for C9, it's just about keeping a cool head and staying oh. focused on the goal in front of you as Vulcan Mayfish for this pick onto Chris. Chris, of course, still has the dash out, but it's going to flash Apple. first. TFL coming in. He's going to go over. Blast Cone. Is it going to come out? He is going to manage to make it out to safety. Well played by Chris to get into the animation as the stun came in. Yeah, he saw so many wards being dropped there. A pink, a normal ward just to try to stop him from hitting the Blast Cone. He does get out. So TFL used there. So that does relieve a little bit of pressure on the map for FPX, but C9 still have the setup. Look at the deep vision in FPX's bot side jungle. Two pinks and a ward. They see absolutely everything. Everything. And by process of elimination, if Tian's not there, he's yep. topside. Exactly. They've done so much with their early investment into Vision. Now is when you actually get paid off for that. And because there's no teleports coming from the side of FPX, there's no surprise factor here uh, for the attempt. I also have to say, going in, oh, that nice. Ignite now taking down Blabber on the way forward. Chris trying to body block, but LWX oh, already going to get set to fall. Blabber now going forward. He's ready for the re engage. Spencer wants to go forward for the one, but the Q Fence. comes out. He miscalculates. The Cathian Rain finds the kill back. They're at least going to get one kill onto Chris. Per off to the side though. Juumbi does a ton of damage. They have to be careful. LWX now firing in. He goes golden, but Vulcan now has to run his way in. Is his entrance going to do it? Tian getting ready to come over the wall, waiting for the ulti to fall away. Immediate ult. Flag and drag comes through as well, but they've stopped him from going in. Tian is overstayed as welcome. He's taking down Red Smite going away. Plamber manages to get it back. It's a messy exchange. Red buff, Red Smite, they get the kill. I think Vulcan leveled up there, luckily, at the end somewhere to get the ultimate, to get the perks just in time to save him. Blabber has five kills on Zinzao right now. 11 minutes in, and he has a gore drinker in this boss fights. And that means you do get that dragon. They ha they force the fight, fight on bottom side. They get their kill. They critically don't give over the bounty that is on Blabber. Even though Sven does go down with the extra last auto there, that you know, they were trying to get two for one. It's a little bit of a greedy, you know, trying to leave the one kill for Sven to pick up and, and chase down the support. But in the end, they still get the objective and the extra money. Oh, so much happening in that early boss fight. Perks was running through the enemy jungle. Doinby was chasing him all the way to bots. And so much happening. It started off with Sven dying in the 1v1. And again, since they've got Cryo mid, you see on the minimap, Perks is moving down, so you just force it with your jungle here. This is the point where Blabber doesn't stay by Sven to help him chase down. Yeah, he's going under turret, so they thought he might be able to have it. And the Q cooldown coming up that quickly means you know, Kai'Sa actually does have the burst, but they still get a massive victory there. Yeah, and Blabber still has Herald, so where is he going to use it? TP top here from Perks to zone away Nuggery. I don't think there's going to be much to happen. Getting down a couple tower plates, trying to get more gold in the back pocket of C9. Keep in mind, no towers have gone down yet, so a lot of standing gold up and available for the next two minutes if C9 can really push these individual advantages. I think Perx realized he can't enter bot right now. He has no flash, no stopwatch, and there's a Jarvan Rumble hitting his bot tier one, so if he even tries to step up in that lane, he's going to get engaged on. Being mid does nothing, so let's just force away the enemy top and actually cross map here. Bot trades for top trade, Perx is going to base. He is going to lose out on creeps, but it does get fudge ahead on this chase. And look, because they use Herald, they can rotate everyone towards mid quicker, so you gain a little 30-second uh, you know, advantage there by getting first tower bonus, as well as this move into more? the jungle. From mid to top here, they have control of map, they're playing on two lanes, I think that's going to be tier two as well. Tier two charges from Heralds are so valuable because of the extra money that was moved into it. Local gold split by both split pushers there. 5k gold advantage 
13 minutes into the game. Tower plating hasn't even fallen yet. Cloud9, absolute control in the early game. Total dominance. Again, 100% kill participation for Vulcan and Blabber. It felt like Blabber and Perks in the first game. Vulcan and Blabber this game, absolute monsters. And again, this is similar to the last game, but Cloud9 are snowballing it ahead very effectively because they are not going for resets to try and defend weak side. They are forcing FPX to, to basically play this game of chicken because they can push harder. When you have Herald, you can get two for one in the trade. You can push all the way to the second turret. You can move in and get the deep vision. You don't have to respect the counter push from FPX, and you just take more in the trade than they can get on the weak side of the map. Yeah, a lot of macro going on there. C9 winning out, but now it's going into a one through one scenario where Perks has ultimate, but he is level nine and he is behind as an individual into Noggery and into Doinby. If they group up, you can see Doinby's right behind Noggery. If they can get some kind of lockdown of the Perks, he will die. So Blabber and Vulcan are trying to cover him. There could be some kind of 3v3 here, but the biggest winner right now is Fudge. He's taking a bot exactly. tower. Nugri has to just TP from top to bot. Oh, He's gonna get stopped stop for the interrupt immediate gold card. It's easy. Do they have enough damage to lock him down? He's been held up for a second. Blabber now on the way in. Nugri running, but the TP is canceled, which means again, the big winner is Fudge. Yes! Rings the bell right here for Fudge. He just earned a bunch of tower gold on bottom side. Can they punish mid though? LWX wants to try and force. How many plates is he getting? I don't know how many plates that tower had, but he's going to get the entire thing. Doinby has TP, but if he invests TP bot as well, and you're losing double TP against C9 with a global, it slides out on any side lane play. So for now, they're just going to let it drop. And, and FPX can't get anything topside. This is now almost a 6k gold lead. And gentlemen, Daniel and Bobby, if I may. <laughs> this is refocusing on the main issue for Cloud9 in week one of Bruce. The coordination was all over the place. Even things as simple as teleporting to join a team fight. What was, you know, dis desynced and 30 seconds off at some times. But this time around, week number two, so clean on the calls here. Twisted Fate ult popped. They go, they stop the split pusher. They, they allow Fudge to get the extra tower. These macro victories are coming from such a cleaner setup. And the comms, you have to think, are so much cleaner this time around, so much more well-focused. And I think it's really good that you point that out, because in the Rogue game, you can credit C9 for responding well to Rogue's maybe over-eager invade. But in this game, they picked the bot fight. They outplayed in the skirmish in a bot lane. Spence started this game with two CS to nine on the opposite side. I thought that was going to be the red flag to end this. <laughs> and it wasn't. They turned that fight, they found that fight, they found that lead, and now on the opposite side for FPX, you're looking at tying C9 if C9 win this game, and you need to start sweating because you felt like the guaranteed second seed with Don one in the lead doesn't feel like the case anymore. And I must say that uh, you know, at the chance of, of, of cursing here, you can feel so much more confident in ending games through split push when you have the Twisted Fate, not just because of the obvious, oh, we have an extra global, but what is so big in professional games is the vision reveal. It, re it removes some of the scary points where teams that have big wombo combos like FBX will oftentimes try and set up in rush, try and get these surprise plays where they pick somebody off, but Twisted Fate can be used very liberally to gain that extra vision. And I think he just popped ultimate right now, as you said it, Kobe. Uh, you can see on the right-hand side of the screen, the ultimate was used. He's going to use it towards mid after pushing out bot, and he just gets vision for the enemy team, right? Free Herald will spot them all out. I don't really need to make a side lane play for the next couple of minutes anyway. And they're just going to pop this Herald mid soon, you expect. Five-man grouped up. And Doinby is probably going to push in bot and collapse towards mid. We might see FPX with some kind of defense here on a 5v5. Or are they just going to opt to give it up? If they do, they might lose Dragon as well. No, Rumble here means it's really hard for them to force the fight, but they're going to try to kick things off as the TP is coming in. Rumble's going to go in and keep your eyes on the Equalizer. It goes across, but it's really not going to connect. Blabber now going to be in trouble. That's going to be a massive shutdown into the hands of the J4. Graves damage raining across the backside. All too well used, but the tower still going to drop. One kill trade for the tower. Yeah, the objective was guaranteed, but Blabber and Vulcan dive for some kind of play on the back line. Crisp gets away without even using the flash, and then FPX just picked up a massive shutdown, so. Maybe they can look for this dragon themselves. Doinby used TP and he's in a base, so it looks like it's just going to be a standoff for now. Yeah, they didn't quite have the range to follow up. You know, Tristana gets more auto attack range from the passive with extra levels. Then it was very risky for him to follow up on that blabber play. Yeah, the, there's 200 health left on Jarvan. Really juicy rel target right there that he wants to finish off. But they don't quite have the back line since Jace can get blocked as far as the shock blast and, and not enough range to finish off that kill. So it's a very good punish by Tien. Uh, to go in and, and actually punish Blabber, trying to exit, you know, just oh, under the TP. TP now coming. Perks on the way in as well. He has the flash. No rapid fire cannon, but the gold card will be ready in a moment. Nuggery's going to be in trouble. Flash. Flashback to the previous game is now going to dash and flash out to safety. 
okay, I can see why they went for the play, right? There's no tier two. Maybe they can overextend and get the kill, but Perks didn't have ult to gap close to CC. And it feels like C9 are making good plays and the correct plays around the map, but they're just making these small blunders here and there. Now they've lost TP, they lost the member, they lost the shutdown, they almost lost the Drake. They're coming in, gonna catch on Tian over the wall, but he's very far away from the rest of the team. There's so much chain CC. Blabber knows not to overcommit this time around. LWX getting stronger and stronger. Level 11 already improved to Cathy and Rain means they do have to respect the potential for FTX to force a fight. Equalizer down though. Now Cloud9 can feel a lot more comfortable while they back away. C9 Crab are helping him out once again. They won the bottom Crab fight. Then he's able to W dash over to this one as well for the exit because you have to take a magnifying glass to some of these plays and Casual brings it up. The opportunity cost of going for that top side play where you don't have huge rewards is, is going to be a very delayed dragon. Um, yes, they still have control of the map so you can go for the reset because nobody got caught there on the top side and try and get there. But this is going to be a much further delayed soul as far as stacking it up. And when you have full control of the map like this with your Twist of Fate ult and your, your extra globals, then you should be focusing on trying to acquire the value much quicker. Yeah, the reason this game just feels tense even though C9's up 5k gold, is they were in a similar situation last time these two teams played each other, right? Yeah, absolutely. All you have to do now is just kind of play the map well, don't trade off evenly, and find good picks. But against FPX last time, it didn't happen. And it is FPX, right? The second seed from the LPL. So there's always that thought in the back of your mind of, you know, they can still find the comebacks. They have oh, it's in the front it. of my mind. It's, <laughs> it's right there in 4K, baby. <laughs> oh, flashbacks. But Fudge is the biggest point that they need to target. And he has no flash. He's the man that they need to kill FPX, but C9 are covering him. And again, I think the extra card that Cloud9 have to play, never mind, there it is. We're committing so much damage now on the crit. Doesn't even have a chance to proc his own Aftershock, so very squishy. But Cloud9 committing FPX. to the siege. There's no response to the top side for FPX. Fudge has no flash. If they just five man dive onto him, they can get a guaranteed kill here. I think C9 know that they have to be careful. Cloud9 backing off. Cloud9 can see the force coming. Blabber <laughs> just kind of teasing them, playing at the edge of madness. He knows if he overcommits, he dies. But if he plays on the edge, maybe he keeps FPX around so long that Chris dies before the fight even starts. Both sides backing away. But if, if that fight had kicked off, we might have seen four or five deaths on both sides. Okay, how can you not love Blabber's playstyle? <laughs> He's, He's just himself. daring them. He's like, do it. Do it, what? <laughs> Chunking them down, daring them to go on him again because he has the safety of the ultimate. Zin, uh -huh. Zin is very deceptively you know, good at taking those fights. Everybody's well you know, accustomed to it now with Gore Drinker, with your ultimate. Um, but I kind of like that where they're chunking them down and kind of baiting them into it because you just need that one overstep that will blow the game wide open. He's feeling himself. He's playing with confidence, right? He knows FPX's limits and he's showing it to them in their face in the way he plays the game. And it's just great to see what C9 are doing around the map, right? They push in mid, move bot, siege the bot to, to force FTX to respond. Perks TP is top to push out. They keep all three lanes pushed in. Perks has a global anyway, and Fudge's flash is coming up back up soon, so they don't actually have to cover Fudge as much. But the later we go, the higher the stakes get on some of these small decisions. Tension building. Kobe, you can't see him, but he's running in place. He wants to feel excited, but he's afraid. I understand the feeling well. Excuse me, sir. I am the picture of calm and professional, <laughs> reliable. Uh, I didn't say I, it was I professional. Do, I do want to bring up, though. Uh, Sam, calm down. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. <laughs> this is a Wendy's. <laughs> um, I do want to bring up once again, the biggest difference to me um, and, and what might help bring down the blood pressure of some North American fans at this moment is that the difference between the previous game versus FBX and this one is that your split pushing, again, is afforded much more safety by the vision reveal of Twisted Fate. So now it is not as much on, okay, they have to do the steps of moving in to get the deep vision for the rotation first. You have a little bit of an extra out with the extra cooldown reduction here uh, for Perks' ultimate. So they, they have a little bit more safety. And it's a kind of deja vu from the last time they faced because Tian's on Jarvan and because FTX have hard engage. They have one play to make over side lanes and that's catch you and engage on you. Perks is playing a similar champ where you have a global and you have a flash to get out of these uh, kind of Lockdown CC abilities, so they should know from what happened last time around and why they lost, how to adapt and how to win this time around with the similar composition that FPX have. And that said, FPX always fishing, looking for that opportunity, looking for that engage, looking to catch out an isolated member. Cloud9 doing very well, never leaving any one person to roam alone. And you can see Fudge on the bot side. He should be able to push in and take this tier two. Not really going to go match. His only job is not to be careful, right? If he sees them in mid, he can start to hit this tower. If he doesn't, he's going to get collapsed on. C9 should know from their mistakes in the last couple of games when to push these towers. I just like how you say his only job is to, is to be careful, and he's face taking the turn. Yeah, Perks used ultimate to spot yeah, him out. He's getting engaged, engaged on, engaged on eyes on the rumble equalizer. It's big, big damage across the backside. But Vulcan vision for the disengage instantly. The AD carry into the backside. LWX is getting exhausted though. His clutch. Chris is now going in, but he's just going to get burned down. Aftershock, not enough. Fit Sven 
finding the resets. Cloud9, do they want to commit to anything else? It's a recall from Perks. Looks like they're happy to just back off. No, just fading. This is huge. No, this is huge tempo. You got to push forward now. Try and leverage the kill. They can get the extra towers. Breaking down tier two, massive for C9. Again, FPX look for an opportunity. Again, FPX go for the wombo combo, but again, it does not pan out. C9 holding on to a 7K gold lead. And I just love when games like this are played well. When you have the very clear, distinct, different play styles of the champions locked in, you know, first three champions, as we talked about in Champ Select, we could already tell FBX going for a big Wombo. They need to play off the synergies. They need to find those big uh, fights and use the Rumble Jarvan early. But Cloud9 have to split the map. So, so much depends on the early, uh, you know, support and jungle finding success. And when you find that success, being able to then play it out into the split push effectively like this is key. Yeah, and Perks, just like you said, Koei, is using the ultimate to spot out FBX. He uses ult here to push out top and move towards mid while Fudge is hitting bots here too. And FBX are getting tired of it. They're playing against the same comp Dam almost playing. TFJs and they're pulling them around the map and FPX are having none of it. They go for the engage, but it's just so scattered. Tian first, Crisp afterwards, LWX in the middle, diving in, getting exhausted. And FPX need to find a way to break these uh, side lanes pushing in non-stop from C9. Small things too, like Perks has been playing with ice in his veins. He's held his flash so late in so many of these skirmishes that he's baiting more and more FPX members in, and that has been turned around by C9 members. So even though he's not got any of the last hits, any of the kills, he's but doing quite C9's, a good job. C9's comp is all about globals and side lanes and single target damage. If they do drop the ball and they do get engaged on and lose Nash, they are really going to struggle. But as long as they keep their lead, it should be okay. Tian, Older coming in and Tian wants to commit to the play. That's going to be jungler Tian. down. He finally fell. Blabber's like daring him again. Charges in, forces on him, and he's had enough. So he tries to force it on Cloud9. Huge punishment. The rest of FBX are staring at each other as the Dragon and the Baron slip through their fingers. Where's our jungler? Yeah, Tian called Blabber's buff, but now that's going to be Infernal Soul. He, won't, for he wasn't bluffing. He's got his whole <laughs> team he wasn't of bluffing. He had, him. he had double aces, and now they're going to lose Nastrid, I expect, as well, because 10 seconds on Tian. And Tian has been struggling so much this tournament. The Viego play, uh, play was good because it's comfort, but from the finals in these mid-early ganks to now the World Championship, Tian is really struggling. Vulcan on the backside, they see the engage, they see the potential, get the fight kicked off, Cloud9 kicking things off, Blabber immediately to the backside, using the ult, the Doinby can't do any damage to this Zen. Chris trying to do what he can to disengage, but now Perks alting in, gold card on the LWX, Sven, blood in the water, he can smell it, that's a double, he's ready to jump up the wall, he's ready to fit for the triple, can he find it? Nuggery next on the list, again, that's gonna be three, Sven yeah. still alive, leaping out to safety, gold card comes in, Doinby from downtown, manages to snipe him away, Tian though getting cut down, C9, can turn right back to the Baron. Jungle freaking diff right here. They're gonna both be down for this one. Blabber will finish up the Baron. Cloud nine own Summoner's Rift. Yeah, five kills for one. Only Sven drops. They're gonna get a Baron. They're on Infernal Soul Point. The scaling is in their favor, and they have full control of this game. The end. Died for the pick. Forced the fight for the rest of the team. As soon as he revives, runs back in. Dies again. Name in Lights and Cloud9 in back-to-back -back must win games. Yeah, and the survivability tools that C9 can now have, right? Blabber has the stopwatch he can build towards GA. Perks can now start building Zonyas. These dive comps, this dive comp from FPX is running out of time. And C9 had a free Baron here, but they just want to turn because of Vulcan's positioning. Great engage on the back line to buy time for Blabber to come and follow up. And it's all about Perks' rapid fire to keep this, this fight going. Ults behind them, rapid fire onto LWX. The target selection was great. Exactly. You mentioned it before, but Blabber's not bluffing. He has the, the chase from the rest of the team right behind him. Uh -huh. Twisted Fate Ultimate. Tristana jumping right over. Chasing down every one of the kills. And now we're going to go right out of that replay into a full reset from Cloud9. Baron of Power recalls, and they've spent all that money. Yeah, and they've got such good side laners to do it as well. Fudge can push in bot, just give him vision. You can see Perks is already hovering around with ultimate up. FPX, the only way you can stop the siege is rumble ulting waves or hard engages. So they're going to have to make one of the two decisions soon when C9 starts hitting on their in hips. Uh, nine pushing their vision line forward. Four members here. You've got Jace pushing in on the bottom side. Slow, controlled siege. Cloud9 far enough ahead that they maybe can take a full on 5v5, but not going to take any risks here. Have poke, have Baron buff. They do not need to play this fast. They can take their time. Where target selection is key here for FBX. Obviously, Fudge has no flash, but he has stopwatch. I talked about the defensive items. Look at the stopwatches on C9. They need to be careful. Perks has flash coming up as well. The siege begins. Bot tier three falls. FPX are on a timer. Blabber committing. Sees Chris Barter use the hex flash. Now wants to go in. As long as he has the ultimate, he's relatively safe to step forward. Perks just poking. They're committing again. Tion going to be locked up. Vulcan pops the ult, expecting a little bit more of a fight. That is one Our cooldown missing. Staying. But C9 might just try to end the game. Backing off is, is the best choice here. You have a wave coming in. You could try to threaten it, but now they've lost Vulcan's ultimate. Chris has flash. C9 could just back off here, but it looks like they're going for it. 
coming back. Gold card ready, FPX respecting it. They're getting zoned away. It's rapid fire cannon as well. Waiting, biding their time. FPX need to make a decision soon. It's a slow siege in. They're gonna lose at least in. one tower if they don't kill this cannon minion. One tower will fall. Now committing. Tian has fully gone in for the fight. If they lose this one, Cloud9 will just end the game. Now Blabber going forward, taking out the jungler. Backing off, turning back to the top side. Cloud9 again, not over committing, not diving the towers, moving up to the top side, ready to keep this siege going. Yeah, FBX have no engage left, only Crisp really, because Tian's dead. The only follow up is Doinby's ultimate. Crisp has to find some kind of fight. Now Vulcan going in, that's enemy support taken down. Other VUX off to the side, isolated, gold carded, locked up. C9, eyes on the prize, eyes on the Nexus, eyes on making it out of groups. They started the day 0 and 3, a win over Rogue, a win over FPX, the miracle in their sights. North America will not be ignored. They will not be trifled with. They will not be denied. This time around, they get the win over FPX. C9's hopes of getting out are alive. These oh. two games have been amazing to see. What did they have for breakfast? What did they scream with yesterday? They're playing like a completely different team today. So clean, so well coordinated. Success in the early game snowballed in back-to-back -back games. Cloud9 are simply on fire. You're seeing, I think, the best parts of C9 come out in these games. You know, the ability to snowball, the ability to move across the map, you talked about it, just surf, surfing through every single lane and then respecting what FPX can do, not making those same throws that they did in week one. They have always had the capabilities for these high highs. The ceiling at the very top in MSI, taking games off Don Juan, off RNG, taking games off the best games, uh, the best teams in the world. And here is the critical point where they're doing it in crunch time. Yeah. And now, think, now you look forward to possible tiebreakers, a lot of scenarios. Yeah, and I think the important thing from these two games, which is just such a positive for Cloud9 going forwards, yes, they won, of course, but there was never a moment where you thought Rogue or FPX were actually turning the tides. That whole game, since the top fights of C9 winning out against FPX, were in full control of the entire map, always winning out on trades. Oh, it's going to be a long day. This is what it looks like when you play so aggressively and with that confidence, that confidence being rewarded and followed up with strong mac macro play from ahead. It, it's just, it's really nice to actually see those mistakes or those openings not being given over to the opponent.